Okay, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you know, I'm from Windigo. In your handouts, your bags, you, were, you received some small stuff like this from the Ontario Fire Marshal's office. I put that in there so give you some tips. But we are going to talk about the wood-burning appliance. There's various wood-burning appliances on the market. You have pellet stoves. I have not seen any in the remote north or in a Sioux Lookout First Nations, any pellet stoves. I've seen the common space heaters. I have seen combo electric oil or with wood type of furnaces. So they all have different requirements. But what I'm going to do is try and touch on some very key points. Which one? There you go. The next slide. Okay, when you're considering to purchase your wood burning appliance for your homes in renovations or in a new, uh, new construction of a home. One of the things that you should look at is the, the appliance itself. You should match that appliance with the size of the home. And is it certified? We'll talk about certification. The other thing, are you going to utilize single wall flue pipes or double wall flu, flu pipes. Okay, don't get flu pipes and chimneys mixed in your mind because they're two different components. Chimneys, the best chimney system and flu pipe system is as straight as possible. So when you're designing a home or you're, you're purchasing your, your appliance, make sure that you select the proper material. So everything from the wood stove, the floor pad, to your flue pipe system, and then from there your chimney, how it goes through the house. It can be an exterior mount through a wall. It can go through the ceiling or it can enter an existing chimney, brick, or masonry. On the First Nations, I have not seen any brick chimneys to date. But I do a lot of municipality inspections for wet, and I see them all the time. So the next one. So when you're looking at your suppliers, yeah, next slide. Make sure that you have the right appliance. There's various makes and models out there. Some are certified, some are not certified. I, two bottom ones I demonstrated in pictures. You might see them. Those are not certified models. The other ones such as Blaze King, Flame, Pacific Energy, Flame, all those types are certified. They're tested to meet a home installation. The other thing you have to look at your location of your chimney or your flue system. Are you talking about stoves? Yes. Birch bark? Uh, for which one? Yeah, you, you can use birch in some of them, right? Well, because you, you, they're, they're, they're more of a hardwood and burns when it's dry. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next slide. Product testings and certification agencies. These are the ones you're going to have to 
understand and find. Next slide. There are only two, two agencies in Canada that certify a solid fuel burning appliance, which is ULC of Canada. Okay? The Underwriters Laboratory of Canada, the ULC. CSA, they carry their logos on the labels. They test and confirm these appliances meet the standard, which is a 627 standard, or the UL. The UL is American. If you just see the UL on the label or in your manufacturer's instructions, it is strictly American standards, right? So they don't follow the Canadian standards. Next one. These are, gentlemen, have a seat. Uh, product testing's labels, what they look like. <clears throat> The CSA International, formerly known as the CSA, the Canadian Standard Association, the Underwriters Laboratory, and the Intec Testing Services. Those are the ones that do all the testings and certifications of appliances. So we have two that write the standards, and then we have the other group who approves those standards. Next one. So you'll see these standards placed on the manufacturer's instructions, right? How many of you guys in the housing, when you open up that box, you'll see that little bag of manu the instructions. How many of you guys actually take them out and read them? Or do you do it like a lot of men, right? Take it throw it on the side, right? I do it sometimes on some stuff. I don't need that. I'll look at the pictures later, right? But you have to utilize that manual. Keep that manual. That includes your flue pipes manual. That includes your chimney manuals from Selkirk, SuperPro, and so forth. Next. Next one. Okay, treatments of a certified appliance and an uncertified appliance. You take a certified appliance, they give you the certification, how close you can put that to a combustible wall, because they've been tested. They've been tested to meet the standards on the floor. They've been Test it for the ceiling height. Okay? Uncertified appliances, you must automatically look at the clearances. 48 inches is the minimum standard for an uncertified appliance. Earlier on, I showed one appliance. They're quite famous in the north. <clears throat> they have to have 48 inches because they're a radiated type. There's no bricks. There's no standard to it. So it's 48 inches, four feet away from any combustible materials, walls, furniture, and so forth. So that takes up a lot of space in a home. Okay? So the floorboard on uncertified appliances require a different standard. Instead of having the sheet metal, you have to put brick or concrete underneath. And sometimes because of that appliance, you may need two layers of bricks or concrete pads. Drywall. Nope. Drywall is fire resistant, but it's not rated to give you clearances, okay? Drywall don't work, okay? Next one. This is the label 
in the absence of your appliance having a manufacturer's instruction, all the in wet inspectors, all the building inspectors will look at this label. All of them are similar in there. On the top, you'll see the certification up here in that corner. You'll see the standard testing to it. Is there a mouse I can use? Right here, you'll see the standard. The Canadian ULC S627. In there, there's a model number. Each model has a different clearance. Okay? So if you don't have that manufacturer's instructions, this is your... Are they standard all for heat? Hmm? All of them standard for heat? No, it depends on the appliance. Okay? When they, the, the ULC or CSA do the testing, right? For, let's say this is the stove. They test the floor, how much heat is radiated, and it will give you a clearance, yeah? And it will give you the clearances to the wall, right? So that's all the information's in there. And then it will tell you the units in a drawing, pictograph, Sidewall clearances, for example, residential installation, 16 inches. Residential with a, a close to the wall clearance with radiant shielding. We'll talk about radiant shielding. Alcove. I'm starting to see some of the homes have alcoves, stoves being placed. You know what an alcove is? No? It's like a little closet. Right? They put a wall on both sides. They put the stove in there. Right? Some of them have half an alcove. So where a closet used to be, they take out one wall. And then they put the stove in there. But it still has to follow those standards. Okay? Under alcove installations. <clears throat> so, again, you got those three standards in this label. This label has to stay on that appliance at all times. How long is that appliance good for? Some manufacturers say 20 years. Some say 30 years. Whatever the lifespan is, how you maintain it as the homeowner, it will tell you in Canada, the clearances of your flue pipe. The clearances of your flue pipe from here, the center of your flue pipe to the wall. If you're using a single wall flue pipe, which is 24 gauge or 25 gauge, right? The black stuff, right? the maximum length of a flue pipe. Anybody know what's the maximum length of a single wall black pipe in a home? 10 feet. That is the maximum. Sorry. How many elbows? It'll tell you on there. Two elbows, 90 degrees, or four 445s be permitted. Right? It'll tell you how to secure them. Up north, I see a lot of snare wire, various wires securing the joints. Right? That don't work. One of the homeowners I went to said, my, chim my flue pipe moves. He called it a chimney. It was hooked up with wire had the firefighters there, they had a little gun, uh, drill, screw, zip, zip, solid, right? It's not going to fall off. A lot of the homes up north, are fires are caused by flue pipes falling. Okay, so three screws. That's on the label. 
The manufacturers' dates are down here in all those labels. So if you don't have that manufacturer's instructions, check the label. If that label's not on that appliance, it automatically goes to uncertified, no matter what. Unless you send that stove, that particular stove, to the manufacturer and they'll possibly give you a new label. <clears throat> EPA, Environmental Protection Standards. Next one. Okay, we talked about some of the certifications, the label, and having your instructions. Keep those on file, housing people. Do a binder. Right? For all the stoves, do a binder. Doesn't mean you have to keep every stove in the community. If you're buying, for example, Pacific Energy and those model numbers, put them in. Okay? That's your backup. Your floorboard protection. Okay? Certified stoves have and been tested to have, to, to be able to sit on a floor. However, to protect the floor from embers when you open the door and any falling objects coming out the firebox, they ask for sheet metal or ceramic finishes on the floor. Heat protection. As you know, you can use just a plain sheet of, on a certified, plain sheet of tin that you can expand on the floor. But it has to have eight inches to the side of the appliance, right? Measured from the walls of the appliance to the rear or where the flue pipe is, eight inches away from that. 18 inches to the front of the appliance floorboard. It's not just to build two two by fours framed, stick a piece of sheet metal on top of it, and your appliance sits right on the edge of it, topsy-turvy, right? Don't work like that. It has to be constructed in a durable fashion. You can buy them from your manufacturers and have them put on the floor for your appliance. They prevent injuries from the homemade ones, from kids running around, you know, without their socks or shoes in the home, cutting their feet. Okay? I'm, oops, back one. Uncertified appliances. If you have an uncertified appliance, then you require added protection. So that means a layer of bricks or a concrete pad. Now, if that appliance still gives off a lot of radiant heat, uncertified, you may need two layers of bricks vented, okay, on the floorboard, okay, for floorboard construction. Next one. <clears throat> As you can see, in this picture, uncertified appliances, for example, they're on the market now, and I've seen some being advertised 45 gallon drums with a steel door, great for a trapper's cabin, but not good for a home, right? They're on the market. And you can buy them in the States and bring them across, but they're extremely dangerous. 45, excuse me, uncertified appliance has to have 48 inches to the side 
to any combustible. Same thing with the back, 48 inches. To any combustibles, 48 inches. Anything, sofa, chairs, and so forth. Beneath, they're asking for a layer of bricks vented with shielding. You may have to get another layer on top of that bricks to provide adequate protection to the floor. With the homes being constructed nowadays, with the different floor joists, the glue type, they will have a fatigue to it if you use an uncertified wood stove. And you'll see the floor start to sink on them or be spongy. Okay? Next one. Now, in the B365, every one of you guys that works in housing should have a copy of the B365, which is the wood burning solid fuel CSA standard. And they're roughly 60 bucks PDF. If you want to get them PDF through CSA, they're about $79. Okay? And the latest version is 2010. This will tell you how to get reductions. So if you're using a wood burning appliance that's uncertified, you must or you shall be 48 inches to any combustibles from the side, rear, and front of the appliance. <clears throat> it also requires a certain height clearance. Some say 84 inches. If it's below that, from the, the top of the appliance, or the bottom of the appliance to the ceiling, 84 inches, which is approximately seven, seven foot. If it's lower than that, then you have to put shielding on top, right? So the more you build it up, the more shielding you require for uncertified appliances. With shielding, you're allowed to go down 60%. Without shieldings to the sides, rear, and corners, down to 36 inches. Still not great. And then to the front side, 48 inches for uncertified appliance. Now spacers. The old code method is using copper pipe with a screw, drill through your your shielding. How many of you guys still do that in your housing? No? Everybody does it the right way? I don't think so. Okay. Now, I've seen them. You put your sheet metal on, on these copper spacing and you drill it right into the stud with the nail or the screw exposed to the heat. So if you ever take that shielding off and look at that stud after a couple years, you'll see it nice and brown. Paralysis starting to occur. Dryness. Almost like a charcoal effect. Eventually that will heat up. So the proper way of doing it is getting some channel, metal channel. Screw that to your studs. Then screw your shielding to those metal channel, channel, channels, uh, channels, okay? That makes sense, right? None of the nails are going into the wood at all. You're having the proper clearances. Next one. Okay? The minimum clearances is seven-eighths of an inch. Right? You buy that channeling from any hardware dealer, it's there. You have a minimum of one inch at the, at the bottom of the shielding. Maximum three. 
That's all spelled out in the B365. It's right in one of the pages. If you have your manufacturer's instructions on one of the pages, it's there. It tells you. Minimum clearance is to the top, is three inches on top. So you allow some cool air to go flow through there. Extending, very important. When you have your shielding, right, in the back, make sure that the it extends from the side of the appliance 18 inches either side so that when you measure the corners in a right angle you have 18 inches coverage. Clear as mud so far or am I confusing you guys? No? Nope. Good enough. If I confused you I'm doing my job. <laughs> Yeah, I'll speak on that shortly. All right, combustion air. Very important thing. Now, the other one is adhesive, right? Use the proper adhesive. It has the right temperature if you're going to use a glue. Do not use uh, caulking, such as tub caulking, sink caulking. I've seen that. Not only up in the First Nations, but in the municipalities. Lots of that. So use the proper uh, adhesive, the glues. But remember, glues dry, glues fail. Next one. Here's an example of a single wall flue pipe. This is taken from the B365. It gives you the clearances required. On a single flue pipe, I mentioned to you, you guys, what's required. It's 18 inches, single wall, to the combustible, 18 inches, to the rear, to the ceiling, 18 inches. Now, to measure maximum Again, total length, 10, right? Always remember that. Now, metal screws on each joint, three of them, okay? Three metal screws, right? Not six inch screws, right? That'll go through and create blockages. Just short metal screws securing each joint with three metal screws. If you got a, an increaser reducer, right, try to have that closest to your chimney, right, because that creates turbulence. It also causes the same effect what a 90 or a 45 degree does in its venting method. Okay, next one. Shielding. When you're doing it, I mentioned you have the clearances down below. You have your studs or your channeling. Again, from the top of your appliance above, it ha that shielding has to extend 20 inches if that appliance needs shielding. If it does need more shielding for the flue pipe, because if you have it closer, then it has to go all the way up to the ceiling, giving you protection. Okay? You see the type of floor pad. It gives you the clearances here, 8 inches. 8 inches to the side, 18 to the front. Eight to the back, right? Very important, okay? Next one. This is how it looks like. Here's a side view with shielding. Here's the clearances, one to three inches. You'll see this in your 365 or your manufacturer's instructions. 
Am I in a picture? Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm moving around. Uh, the airspace. Again, how f what was the airspace gap? Seven eighths, right? Am I right? Close enough? Get a big spider, stick it in there. If he falls through, it's big enough. Non-combustible spacers. I don't like, sorry, I don't like the copper spacers, you know, from plumbing fixtures drilled into the stud. I like to see, as an inspector, that the channeling be used and then your shielding put on top of it to give you that added protection. <clears throat> your space heater reductions will allow you to reduce your clearances, which we'll talk about the, di the distances here in shortly. In the picture here, it gives you a better view of the channeling. I know it's kind of hard to see from way back there, but it's in the code, the 365. It shows you the wall protection, non-combustible spacers, the channeling, perfect. But if you put that copper in directly, it creates another concern. It may not happen, yes? Well, then what you tell the, 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 it's the, the conditions that, that occur, and if they can purchase new channeling, right, just remove them, attach it, takes 15, 20 minutes, and put it on top of that, okay? I, I know, but you're giving the homeowner or the home occupant a sense of assurance. So it won't happen, right? Next. These are the clearances, reductions. If you have shielding, we deal with sheet metal quite a bit up in the north. We don't deal with ceramic tile or other material. But I'll speak on, what do you call it, uh, that board, cement board, shortly. Yeah, depending, okay? There's, there's some, we'll talk about that. You will get a 67% reduction. So you can bring in the, the stove if you're using sheet metal, gap at 7 eighths of an inch. And if you have it at the ceiling, right, you can reduce it down to 50%. That means if you can measure and those measurements are within that 50%, then you're meeting the code. If it's above that, then you may need additional shielding, okay? Ceramic tile, non-combustible spacers, uh, sheet metal backing, there it is, 67%. Ceramic tile, you can go down to 33 and 50%. Some of the communities I know use ceramic tile in some of their construction, not many. And then it talks about bricks. So this sheet is in the B365, 2010. And that's also in the wet manual. Okay. Now, this telescoping flue pipe, okay, what you want when you're putting your flue pipes in, is that flue pipe to be as straight as possible. With more elbows, more problems occur, right? The hotter the gases, the cooler the effect, and it creates more problems as it goes extending. You can buy extendable flue pipes, okay? Again, flue pipes are black pipes. 24, 25 gauge. 
Okay, next one. Now, the rules of the single wall flue pipe, minimum clearances to combustible. We talked about the, the appliance, now the flue pipe, 18 inches. 18 inches, so no matter which way, we all got this, right? I always, in my tape measures, mark it off. 18 inches, right? And just go around the flue pipe. The clearances reduction, if you put shielding, can go down to nine inches. So if you, your stove, you got it all set up, now you want to reduce it. You put shielding up, you can bring it down to 50%, which is half of 18. Okay? Now, maximum length, again, I mentioned that, 10 feet. Unsupported, three. So if you've got 10 feet of pipe, straight, right, straight up, every three feet has to be supported, okay? Maximum elbows, right? Like the hockey player, Gordy Howe, Northern Man's Tournament, you see a lot of it. Elbows, two elbows, 90 degrees, right? And your slope, right? The slope of the flue pipe, right? Not like that, right? Crimped end down, right? Joints secured with three metal screws, right? Not huge screws, just three nice quarter inch metal screws into the flue pipe. Now when you're buying your appliance, before you get into the chimney, what do you guys prefer on flue pipe size? Right? Flue pipe size. Eight inch, right? Seven? Seven? Seven, eight, ten, right? When you're doing that, also consider your chimney, the flue in it, right? So, <clears throat> you got a six inch black pipe going up, instead of buying a reducer increaser, buy a chimney that's six inch flue inside. So everything goes all the way up six inches or eight inches, whichever what it is. To me, it's cost saving instead of buying these little adapters to make it fit. The other thing I see quite a bit up north is galvanized flue pipes being used. Good for oil, right? Good for oil. No darn good for flu, for uh, wood, because there's a chemical reaction with galvanized. You'll see tin, tin foil wrapped around the joints or any holes that it creates. Extremely dangerous for carbon monoxide. <clears throat> okay, next one. Double wall flue pipes, if you guys ever think of them, the advantages, right? You can bring it in to a wall to six inches. Imagine that, six inches. A double wall flue pipe. A little bit more money in the pocketbook right off at the kick. Long, lifespans longer. More heat is retained in the pipe that distributes in the room. Positive thing. <clears throat> so, the clearances. Lifespan of a flue pipe, really 
We don't know. But I've seen them go in a year. I've seen them go in two, three years. Right? They rust and so forth. Next one. Here it is, the, the, the differences of a single wall and a double wall. I'm using the Selkirk WSA, uh, w, uh, excuse me, DSP double wall stove pipe. It's tested to meet a standard. So it gets a stamp. Life warranty, lifetime. Clearances to combustibles is six inches. It's heavier gauge, stainless steel, luminized steel. You use a black pipe, single wall, cheaper in a pocketbook. Lifespan, not there, no warranty. It's not tested, light gauge, so it's going to fail in a couple years. Right? More money, more money by buying that. So, it's all up to you guys. Depends on your heating, how you guys heat. I've seen some of these pipes up north where they're red. How many of you guys seen that? Right? Right? Red. Scary. Next one. Okay, vertical installation. As straight as possible, right? It looks like that. You have a non-combustible pad. It, you have the clearances required and they're met. You can put a single wall, a double wall flue pipe as close as six inches. Right? Something to think about. Your adapters, ceiling adapters, fit more perfectly. Your finishing bands fit better. Ceiling supports are there. And then it's connected into your chimney, an insulated chimney that's rated. And it has your ceiling pass-through or your attic box with the proper clearances. Right? Yes? Yeah. In, in, the, in the chimney? In the chimney. Well, I'm not there yet. Well, it's coming. Okay. On the, there, there is a two inch clearance up here, but we'll talk about it on the next slide, I think. When it, nope, not here. With a clean out, right? You have your wood stove, your T clean out, 90 degree, and then a double wall pipe still at six inches if you want to try that method. Next one. <clears throat> Today the modern chimneys are well designed. Safety is at the most concerned by the manufacturer. Again, when you buy them, right, keep that installation manual that comes with it. Whether it's one sheet or two sheets or half a sheet, keep one copy, right? And your installation should be pre-planned. How you're gonna put that wood stove in that home, like what you, when you're buying it, okay? Next one. Chimney function is to produce a draft that draws combustion air into the appliance, right? Some of the appliances have their own combustion air intake, right? You can attach that non-combustible pipe from the appliance either to the crawl space where it's gonna draw air through to the appliance when needed. You can have it extended to the outside where it's going to draw air into the appliance when it's needed because you don't want that stove to compete against your range hoods, your HVAC, 
your uh, dryer, where you're going to start getting backdraft in a home. Right? You get a little puffs of smoke coming out of your appliance. That causes it. <coughs> the chimney, right? Be isolated from combustibles. You know, around a home, I see a lot of trees. I even seen them, the branches, a couple inches away. That creates problems for your chimney to work, to give you that draft, to pull that smoke out and heat, right? The chimney has to be resistant to corrosion and so forth. Next one, please. Okay, so when we're doing a chimney install, okay, the picture here indicates a, what do you call it, a uh, brick chimney. Let's look at it as a stainless steel Selkirk chimney CF model, right? The chimney extends upwards. It has to have a maximum from the peak of the roof or the closest portion of the roof, 10 foot distance, and a two foot height above that line, that visual line. Okay? And then usually if you have it more closely up, you can have it up to three feet. Clear as mud? I see some, no, not as clear. So when you're putting in the chimney, okay, let's see, this is a, this model. If you're putting it on this side, this chimney, when you measure from here, or the highest point, to the next point up here, has to be 10 feet from there. And then it has to have a two foot extension so that the wind will come nicely and pick it up the exhaust. Yes? If you're a horizontal distance is greater than 10 feet, you've got a house that's 36 feet wide, I'm not feet. What would my choice be then? 16 feet from here? Yeah, if it's, yeah, but those are like, uh, If you're above 16, then, then you're good. Yeah, you're good. That's the minimum, right? However, if your chimney is above five feet, right? It needs support brackets, right? Making sure she doesn't topple over. I've seen chimneys, you know, 10, 10 feet in height with no support brackets, and then you'll see it start to lean. And where does the stress go? all the way down to the appliance. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Factory built chimneys are designed to 650 degrees Celsius or 2100 degrees, right? The chimneys itself are designed to withstand high temperatures in, that's coming out of the the chimney. It even can support a chimney fire. But if you have a chimney fire, have it reviewed by a qualified wet inspector or your fire department. Because sometimes those stainless steel flue pipes inside this, the, the insulated pipe will melt the support brackets inside and you'll be able to slide that Blue pipe, well, that stainless steel, up and down. Okay, next one. <clears throat> the type A, sort of like the decorative ones, you know, you see these bricks or these nicely designed chimneys, designed before 1981, don't use them. If I see them up north, I tell the housing people, take them away, they're no good. And they've been found to be shipped in some housing packages in the past number of years because they found them in a warehouse. Let's get rid of them, right? So monitor your stuff. The chimneys 
that are rated to 650 degrees usually have about a one inch install insulation all around that stainless steel inside. Okay? Making it safe and easy to clean. Don't use a steel brush inside your stainless steel chimneys because you'll do damage. Because creaso and metal will react and rusting and so forth. Next. Some of the effects. Now, <clears throat> to answer Mikey's question, inside your roof or your attic shield box, there must be a complete clearance around that chimney inside the attic of two inches. It has to be kept clear, vented, so it allows it to cool. If you pack it with insulation, you're going to have a fire, guaranteed. Okay? So, some of the effects of negative pressure. Trees have a big play in around the homes. Your peak of your roof has another one. The height of your chimney has an issue. Chimney caps, right? 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Nice thing that sits on the roof, right? So what it does, it creates a negative pressure because the wind is coming from both ends, pushing that superheated gases back in the home. And that's when you open the door and you smell creaso in the home or smoke smell in the home or you get some staining on the, roof, on the ceilings, you get a negative pressure. Or there's a lack of combustion air. Can I get the next one, please? Okay. Like I said, this also can play a factor with all this negative pressure coming in from the outside, cold air. Your appliances, kitchen range, your hot water tanks, if you've got oil burner type hot water tanks, uh, natural gas and all that good stuff, drawing air, dryers, big ones, another one, causing problems. And then it's creating negative pressure. She's drawing all this cold air from the outside back into the house. Right? So you got to create a positive combustion air to the appliance. Simply as, the next one. Open a window. It allows the air to flow can create it, and your smoke comes in through the home. Next one, please. Whoop, what happened here? There it is. Okay, so you have combustion air by opening a window, or you have a combustion air intake on the appliance where it's drawing air from the outside, right? So what that does, it allows the heat to transfer through the home properly, all the way around the home, and then allows the superheated gases to escape upwards and out the building, okay? Yep. Chimney fires, okay? Again, I'm going to step back just a bit. When you're going through your attic, into your attic, through your ceiling, Make sure that the spacing is there, two inches, right? If you have a concern, if you're not doing it right, right? You're housing people, right? Call your manufacturers, call your tribal councils, get the professional advice, right? So that you can do it properly. <coughs> Chimney fires are a result of poor firing techniques, right? Or lack of proper maintenance. You get the appliance operating 
with incomplete combustion or less combustion, then you get all the staining on a chimney. You get this ice buildup. How many of you guys get ice buildup on a home? On your chimneys? Every community? Some of your communities? Just one? I don't believe so. What happens? The homeowner is burning what type of wood first and four? What? Pine. 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 Yeah. Could be pine. Could be green. The majority of it being green. And that has lots of moisture in that wood. And moisture in the wood has to go somewhere, right? And then you get all this creaso and ice buildup on the chimney cap. Off comes the chimney cap and it starts to run down the chimney. Right? Questions? No. The staining. There's another thing. Once it goes in, I've seen homes without the collar the proper collar on your chimney where everything's running down it's into the living room or in, in where the wood stove is the flashing is improperly installed flashing itself step flashing here comes your flashing the metal flashing start putting your shingles properly on it. That prevents some of the stuff. Next one. The testings. Okay. Uh, some of these, how many of your communities have these? Exterior mount chimneys. One or two, three, four, right? They're good, right? But there's a, lo a heat loss in them. But they're great, too. However, require some proper spacing. Two inches here from any combustibles. Properly bracketed. Three feet apart. Support, wall support in there and your clean out. And then your, your pass through. Some of your pass throughs don't have insulation. Some do, insulated. Fire stops and trims, collars and so forth. Here's the vertically one. Lifespan, 10 years. Your flashing, storm collar, proper chimney, your firebox in your attic space, your flue pipe. How much time I got left? Half hour? Lots of time. Um, yes? Yep. 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 Just maintain it right up here, right? But again, if you're above five feet, support brackets. Right. Yes? This one? Yeah. It's because the, the amount of moisture in the wood, that's one. And then there's snow and ice coming, getting in there, inside the chimney. And that could be caused by the improper height, right? Or improper chimney cap, right? Taking it off letting it cool down, right, and then relighting it, and all this ice and stuff comes in, right. I've seen it where I'm going to inspect the inside of it, take, take the inspection cap off, and about a gallon of uh, black stuff comes falling out, okay. Very important, do not put insulation right up to your box. If there's a box in there, keep it clear. Okay, next one. 
As you can see, your round types, was that me? Sorry. Your storm collar. I see lots of those missing up north. Why? I don't know. Don't know. You have it coming down your flashing box and your step flashing. I see them where they just put that on top of the roof. Forget about the, the shingles. And people are wondering why there's water coming down their pipe on the inside. That is improperly installed. So make sure that when you put the, the shingles, they're stepped down so the water flows. Okay? <clears throat> As you can see, the insulation, insulation guard, properly done. Follow that manufacturer's instructions, right? Don't use it to make a good fire starter, right? Keep it. Lifespan. Manufacturers say 10 years. Not a lifespan warranty. It can go on and go on and go on if it's maintained properly. But that's as far as Selkirk will give you when you're buying it. They're saying it should last 10 years. There's a warranty on it. Right? If you maintain it and follow it, it's tested. 2100 degrees or 650. Next one. <clears throat> now, in Canada, the ULC 629, that's the standard for chimneys. If you buy a chimney that has the UL 103 high temperature, well, that can be an issue if you're looking for insurance because it's not certified for Canada. So when you're buying a chimney, make sure it has that 629 standard. Very important. So when you buy it, as I said at the beginning, start at your floor pad. What size of appliance I'm going to buy? How am I going to, you know, have floor protection? What size of appliance do I need in that home? Do I need an appliance that can service 1,500 square feet while the home is only 600? Kind of an overkill, right? Get an 800. A few bucks. Single wall. Flue pipe or double wall. Spend it now, save it now. Whichever, right? It may have, you know, I know your budgets are limited, but look at it. Instead of buying a flue pipe every year, it may last four or five years saving you that much money than replacing it every year. Your decorative ceiling support, then your, your chimney going into your space, your attic space, your roof flashing, storm collar, and then your chimney cap, right? Very important. Same thing on the outside. Right? Remember, five feet support brackets. Two elbows. Right? Two elbows. Next one. Three good reasons why we use chimney caps. Right? Not to be used as an ashtray. Right? Chimney caps prevent rainwater and snow and ice from going into your chimney, right? If you have a brick chimney, it will eat away at the mortar, clay liner, and so forth. Animal protections, birds, rodents, squirrels, 
right? How many of you guys found squirrels in your chimneys in the summer? No? Not yet. Birds? Not yet. Spark. Yeah? Ducks. Yeah, if you can get a duck in there. <laughs> yeah, you get nice and smoked, right? You know? Yeah. Spark. Uh, uh, a chimney cap prevents sparks from bouncing all over your roof and causing a fire to your exterior side of it. Next one, please. Cleaning. Very important. Right? I recommend that a chimney should be cleaned and your flue pipe should be cleaned on a regular basis and because of the amount you use it up north. I suggest once a month, right? Because the high usage of the wood stoves, some because the use of your material you use to burn in there. Don't use that as a garbage burner, your wood stove. I've seen everything in there. Right? I've seen people putting diapers in there and going, oh, what a smell, right? But if you have a chimney, stainless steel, use a proper round chimney brush, right? Try not to use a metal one on a stainless steel. If you got brick, use a square one but I don't see too many of them up north. Next one. Carbon monoxide. Stainless steel, you use the plastic brush. They come, you can get them at any hardware store, right? Make sure that the wood stove is down. Your chimney is cool because I get calls constantly from the fire departments up north. We need new brushes. Well, you just got some new brushes. Yeah, but the homeowner didn't want to turn his stove down. Well, he has to wait till then next time, right? But so they melted it. Carbon monoxide. One of the biggest things that causes human life losses in Canada and North America due to the fact that the carbon monoxide displaces the air in the home. Now, the more we get into these airtight homes, this becomes more of a problem, right? Some of the biggest factors to, to know is that you need a carbon monoxide detector on each floor level where you have a wood burning appliance. Now, is that code under the building code? No. Yep, but it's required by code now and it's law in Ontario to have it. But First Nations still fall under that voluntary compliance, but we still put them in for the safety of our people, right? <clears throat> Remember, it's extremely dangerous when you have a carbon monoxide issue in a home. Next one. Smoke alarms. I'll be touching on carbon and Smoke alarms this afternoon, very important, choosing the right one. All homes are designed and built with a electrical installed smoke alarm when they're brand new. How long they last? First wood stove or the first bannock burning, right? And usually they're beaten off the wall, right? So. Make sure that they're installed. I suggest 
that smoke alarms be installed in the bedrooms. If you don't have electrical uh, in, uh, smoke alarms in the home, get battery operated ones or the 10 year lithium smoke alarms. And I'll go through it in there properly installing this afternoon and so forth. How to install them, smoke alarms. Now, basically I gave you a run through on some of the code compliances. Uh, it's not the full course, it's just touching them. It gives you an idea what to look for, right? Starting off with your floor pad, a proper stove, right? For the size of the home. Whether it's you're going to design a wood furnace, there's clearances required for the ductwork too. So that's all included in this stuff. So that's important. Your chimneys is another one. Right? Smoke alarms. Maintenance. And all this good stuff with the black tar running down. Right? What type of wood? Right? Green wood. It's easier to cut. It's closer by. Instead of going out in the summer or in the fall, start cutting the dry stuff, stocking up for the winter. Right? If not, some of the communities have the fire departments looking at the wood stoves, helping the building people, reviewing them, and so forth. Okay. Any questions? Anything? If you need to get a hold of me, have questions later, you can find me on the Windigo website and shoot me an email, and I'll be glad to shoot you back an answer. Yes? Is there a proper way to install the roof pipes? Like from male to female? To crimp down, male down. Yeah, downwards. So that any creaso and anything else will go towards the stove downwards, right? If you have it the opposite way, there's creases going to start to come down on the outside. So make sure she's inverted. Okay? And that's where an, earlier on in, the, in, the, in the, the presentation I showed you the reducer increaser. She's always attached to the top so everything starts to roll downwards. If you have it the other way, then it's going to come out. Okay? Anything else? Okay, uh, I'll be doing these. Yes? Say again? Your ceiling is low. Oh, the low pressure. That's your chimney cap. Right? And the wind factors. And then maybe extending your chimney. <coughs> That can help it. But if the, the, the atmospheric pressure is pushing down, you might have to do a design, a complete different design for that home. Or look at increasing the height of it. Right? That's, that's a, a design feature, right? So the, the flue pipe itself and the chimney should be designed to allow a lift in it. Combustion air. So it draws its own air from a low level, right? Because if you're drawing room air, it's going to draw back. Clear as mud? Yeah. So if you got an appliance, for example, here, you got a, say, 20 feet of chimney and flue pipe. If you put a, a combustion air from the outside at the lower level, that pressure, the atmospheric pressure, We'll push it here. Your stove is drawing it from this little pipe, four inch, two inch, whatever it is, 
and it'll send it back up. Instead of it trying to draw in the home the air, right, and then going outwards, that will may do it. Me, I have to look at it. Okay. Plays a factor with all the trees around and so forth. The low level of the ground. Any other? No, no, not, not all of them. Uh, I've seen where they're drawing air from the crawl space, right? So that, that is acceptable in the code, right? But actually going outside, some of the homeowners don't like that little bit of cold draft that occurs in the appliance when it gets started. Go to the outside. His problems, right? Yeah. I, I know his problem is wearing a Montreal hat, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. HRVs, I, I would have, again, the combustion air, you know, making sure that, that it, the appliance is drawing its own air because you don't want it competing against each, uh, these other appliances, right? So, and I tried to explain that earlier on, right? So, did I answer? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No? That's all I have, and thank you for your attention.